OK. So let's start again. I just pulled up uh, this uh, cheat sheet just to see that uh, we already saw the strings uh, function. We already saw many of the array methods. Uh, uh, these ones will be very interesting because are the functional methods for working with the arrays. Uh, and so we'll, uh, we'll have a chapter on those. Uh, and uh, all the maths uh, library is very, very easy, okay? It just, just function that compute the basic math function. Okay, so uh, we are at a, at a good point. Uh, we said the regular expression, we try to forget them. Uh, at least I try to hate them every time. Uh, I, um, I tend to use them. Hmm? Uh, date is an object uh, for which uh, the behavior is quite, uh, in, well, tends to be incomplete uh, in the normal JavaScript implementation. So we, are, we will not be using uh, the date from the standard libraries, uh, but we are using some external library to hand, for handling dates. Uh, that's important stuff, but uh, it, needs, it needs to be done correctly. The, the normal implementation is lacking for uh, especially uh, the, 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 all the knowledge about time zones and, and type conversions and so on, okay? So now we are going to, to focus on two other cornerstones on, of Java or JavaScript, which are functions and objects, okay? Um, that are, say, primitive constructs in the language. So let's go here in this second presentation and uh, let's talk about objects, okay? So JavaScript is an object-oriented programming language, fine. Uh, the uh, first uh, thing that you have to know about JavaScript objects is forget everything you know about Java objects, okay? They work in a completely different way. way. Huh? Um, one could say that Java is a class-oriented Pro, uh, programming language, while JavaScript is an object-oriented programming language. In Java, a class is the cornerstone of, of the program. You define classes, and then there are methods and property of classes. The types are related to classes and so on, okay? So without a class, you cannot do anything in Java. In JavaScript, it's the other way around. Classes are not even so we're not even in the beginning of the language, while objects were. So um, it may seem strange, but you can create objects without classes. That is what JavaScript does. Classes are just an easy way of creating an object, an object, huh? a syntactically easy way of creating an object, but the object itself doesn't depend in JavaScript from a class for being created. Hmm? So we need a bit to, to shift our expectations. It's a different object model. There are still objects. There are all the concepts you need, uh, encapsulation and, uh, and uh, inheritance and so on. You can, they can be implemented by in a different way, where the main focus is not on let's define a class, but let's build an object, okay? Uh, the first uh, point. The second point is uh, objects in JavaScript are dynamic. Since you don't have a class that uh, dictates exactly which properties you may have as an object, uh, you as an object may have a set of properties and uh, along the time you can create new ones, add new properties. So the set of properties of an object is dynamic. New properties can add, be added at any time and can be convenient because how many times do you create just a new class uh, because we need an extra attribute? Huh? just for a moment, just for a method, just in a given context. Okay, in JavaScript, you just uh, tuck the attribute in and, uh, and let's use it. Hmm? In JavaScript, there are no access control methods, so every attribute, every method is public. Hmm? I'm not using the word method very easily because actually the concept of method of a class uh, is a bit fuzzy in JavaScript. Uh, a method is just a property that happens to be a function. Also, we also need to do a discussion like this about function. Functions are uh, very powerful and strange uh, uh, type of objects here. Um, so properties and methods uh, are, are the same stuff. Okay, they are, they are just uh, properties 
references uh, stored inside an object, they may refer to a numerical or structured value, and we think of them as properties or attributes of the classes, or they may refer that to a function object, and so we can call them methods if we like, okay? But there's no real formal distinction between the two. So how do we create an object? Very easy, there's a, um, the inline syntax for creating an object is just a set of braces, curly braces, with a list of properties separated by comma, and each property has a name and a value. Okay, it looks a lot like uh, Python syntax. Open brace I means create an object, like open square bracket means uh, create an array. Okay, so the creation operator are the braces, the curly braces. And then we have the contents of the object, which is a list of properties, each composed as a pair, name, and value, value name, value, pair. Huh? Um, the names may be free. The values also may be of any type. In this case, we have an object with four properties, author, title, four, and pages. I don't know if four is, is a reserved word, maybe it could not work. I'm not sure. Um, and then three of these properties are string, uh, strings, and the fourth one is a uh, number. Um, I'll detail about the syntax. This trailing comma is tolerated by the language. It's not required here. You see that you don't have any trailing comma at the end. But when you are defining an object like that, uh, it's very convenient to have the, the comma after the last element uh, because if you switch the lines and add the new one, delete new one, then you don't have to adjust the commas uh, manually. But it's just a very, very de little detail about the syntax. Uh, and so we created an object. What is the type of this object? Object. We don't need a class to be an object, okay? We don't need to enforce uh, uh, a class um, uh, okay, um, in area of be, be belong, uh, okay, we don't need to enforce belonging to a class for me to be an object. I, I have a set of property, properties, so I am an object. Hmm? Don't need anything more. Uh, the name of the properties normally can be written just like that, or it can be surrounded by quotes, and in particular the quotes uh, are useful if the name of the property is not a valid variable identifier. Okay, I could call a property A dot B, for example, or uh, asterisk, or whatever, okay? And in this case, of course, you cannot write uh, A dot B or asterisk uh, colon learning JS. That would not be syntactically a valid identifier. So in those cases, you just surround the name of the property with quotes. I, I wouldn't suggest it, okay? But if the name of your property contains spaces or other character, which is not the normal alphanumerical ones that you use for creating, for defining variables, you can use them. Mm -hmm. Just use the quotes uh, every time. Mm -hmm. um, so the property names are always strings. Mm -hmm. So this is not a hash table. This is not a dictionary where the keys may be any, any type of object. The, uh, the keys or the name of the properties must be strings, okay? Uh, they must be unique, of course, uh, in every object, uh, and can be created when we create the object or can be added uh, in a second moment, uh, just with an assignment operation. Uh, the values may be any JavaScript value, either objects, uh, arrays, uh, arrays of objects containing arrays, whatever, okay? And in particular, a value of an object may also be a function, Sorry, a value of a property, not of an object, may also be a function. And in that case, we call it a method, if we want, hmm? or a function property, which would be, would be the, the correct uh, definition. For accessing properties of an object, we have two different syntaxes, the dot syntax or the bracket syntax. Book.author extracts the 
value of the property whose name is author from the object uh, book that I created here. The same can be done with book, uh, braces, uh, string, uh, author. They do the same. Let's say the second one is the more general one and the first one is the shortcut. And it's also the more natural one. Uh, the second one is useful in two cases. One when, of course, the name contains spaces, for example. The name of the property is not a valid identif identifier, so you must use the string notation. And uh, for accessing that, you must use the square brackets. Okay, that's a corner case. The normal case is when the attribute name is uh, computed. You don't know, it comes from a variable. So your variable x that contains author. So you want to access uh, book dot, not book dot x, x, that would be the variable, the, the symbol x. Book dot, uh, the current value of x. And so in that case, you write book, uh, square brackets, x. Uh, that can be useful, especially when you are you know, processing some objects uh, that with an unknown or variable number of properties, you want to loop, loop through them. And so you have a variable that uh, mm, contains the name of the properties, but you cannot write them in your code because you are you know, uh, determining them dynamically. This is all a consequence of the fact that the attributes are dynamic, and so we, we need methods for handling with indir indirect uh, uh, knowledge about the, the attribute name. If you think about this, in Java, there is no possibility of doing that. A number of attributes or methods can be, you, you should write it by itself, okay? Uh, unless you are using a refraction library, but it becomes much more complex. Here, it's just very natural. So, uh, for example, this code, what does it do? It creates an object called book with one, two, three, four, five attributes, five properties. Uh, the object is book uh, that creates this is the representation of the objects. Uh, one, two, three, four, five properties. Some of them are simple objects uh, like strings uh, or numbers. And one of that, the last property, is an, is an array. So JavaScript is creating another object called array, uh, of type array, sorry. They put it here and puts a reference to this array as a value of the property of this object quite normal object model. Uh, book is the reference to this object. When you extract person and name, book.author uh, or book.author are, are extracted from here. Actually, this representation is a bit uh, simplified. Uh, here it looks like these three strings are different. Actually, they are the same string. The correct representation would be one string here. Sorry. Can I write it or not? Okay. One string here, Enrico, and then a narrow pointing from this to there, there. Because strings are objects, uh, and what we are storing are only references to objects. We tolerate this notation because strings are immutable. So actually, there is no way for us uh, to tell the difference within these two representations. Okay, it's just a, a, a mental model you can make. Since this is immutable, there is no way that they can modify this uh, and uh, see the difference between the, this modification that happened in many times at the same time. No? So with immutable values, we the difference between copying the reference and copying the value is just theoretical. Okay, it's good for efficient reason, you know, you don't have to copy many bytes or whatever, but from a practical point of view, there's no way of telling the difference with immutable objects. And immutable objects are numbers and strings. Okay, all the rest, all the other types of objects, we must be explicit in our mind and uh, be aware whether we are talking about a reference or a copy of the value. Huh? That will make a difference. And in fact, for an array here, we have the explicit uh, representation of a separate object that can be referred uh, by uh, book dot chapter pages, gives me this array, or number pages that points to the same array. 
a number pages uh, can point to the same array because uh, I assigned it here. I extracted book chapter pages. This is an, uh, uh, um, a property of type array, and so this is a reference to the array itself. Okay, uh, I'm not creating a new array, I'm assigning a reference, equal copies as, uh, references, never copies objects. Hmm? Um, this is quite, again, there is no hidden copy happening in, in JavaScript. Everything is passed by reference, in assignments and in functions. Hmm? If you want a copy, you must do it yourself or a method that returns a new object, but the documentation is always very clear, which method return new objects and which, which method return references or, um, or, uh, or modify the, the object itself. Okay. Um, this kind of, of notation can lead to some uh, useful abuse, if you want, uh, you can also think uh, of an object, uh, the names of the object being uh, values, no? uh, not necessarily. When, so the normal notion of an object is something that you have a blueprint of, uh, you call it a class, uh, and then all the objects have the same properties. That's okay. Like structures, but more, pow more, more powerful. But this is a more general mechanism that we can, it can to a point, uh, Simulated, for example, what we have with the hash, hash, hash tables in Java or uh, dictionaries in Python, where the name of the property is an actual value that you read from your input, for example. Okay, for example, you can have, uh, this is not the correct example here. Uh, sorry. The, w w an example would be to have a telephone uh, a list of telephone numbers, uh, so you may have a, a telephone number for me to be one, two, three, four, five, as a string, of course, and a telephone number for Luigi to be seven, eight, nine, ten. So, this looks like an associative array where we are indexing some data structure with a string. What we are actually doing is creating an object, uh, tell, tell uh, with uh, a first property, which is, uh, in this case, oh, oops, I had it when it does that. Okay, I lost it. Okay, but you get the idea where the index is not always the same. It's not the name, but maybe the name of a person. Okay, it's, a, it's not a general behavior for a map or a hash table or a dictionary like the other language have because it's very restricted for the key being a string, not any type of object. But in some cases, it may be useful. Of course, in, the, in JavaScript, we have a, a map data structure proper if you want to do these kind of things, to index some structure with other objects. Uh, in the small case, you probably, in some cases, you just, we just need a, a simple object for storing some, uh, some data, index it by values. Hmm? But in most of the cases, we use them just in the object-oriented object way where the property names are sort of known. Hmm? And they are not fixed because in JavaScript they are not fixed, but they are known uh, beforehand. Uh, again, we should not abuse uh, the computing, compute, computed names of, of the properties uh, because one could imagine having a, a, a property name uh, composed in some way like that. So many properties called address one, address two, address three, and then we, you, any string expression could be a property name, hmm? but it becomes really it lends to confusion in the code, by the way. So the language is much more flexible than the way we want to use it. Um, okay, there's another strange syntax uh, where you are creating an object, so with the braces, 
but the name of the property is not fixed, but it's coming from a variable. And this is a stre strange syntax because it doesn't have any any consistency with the other. Uh, you, we, we just put uh, the variable in braces. Mm, and then it will use uh, as a string uh, the value of this variable as a name of the property, which is uh, strange because it, it normally in brackets you have strings. Uh, but anyway, it's only used when you are creating an object in braces because otherwise you can use norm normally the, this kind of syntax. Uh, this uh, accesses the property called title. And the second one accesses a property called according to the string currently contained in title, in the title variable. Okay? So this is a sort of a fixed property name, and this is a sort of dynamic property name. We see what the title variable, title should be a variable, we see what the variable contains, and that would be the real property name that we are accessing here. Hmm? Um, Okay, what happens if I try to read a property that doesn't exist? JavaScript doesn't throw any error, but it uh, returns uh, undefined. Okay, so it's, uh, it's not an error to access a property that doesn't exist, uh, I, but it's a way of checking whether this property exists. So, since undefined is one of the few values that are interpreted as false, uh, you can do stuff like that. You know, I have the same name if the book variable is defined and the book contains an author, so this is not undefined, and uh, book.author exists, and so it has a surname. It may have a surname. So, this will give me a string only if all of these are defined. If any of these are undefined, for example, the book doesn't have an author property, this uh, sequence of ends is uh, stopped here, and the result is returned uh, as undefined. So surname would be surname is equal to undefined. So this is a way of uh, having, if you are sure that your object contains an author property, and the author property is an object by itself that contains a surname property, fine. Just go with the last. Uh, expression. If you are not sure about that, then you can put some guards before. You are guarding an expression by evaluating that expression only if the precondition exists. And the precondition is that the object uh, properties uh, leading to that value actually exist along the path. Okay, so it's a way of, uh, at the end here, having a value, a string, or undefined. And so you can test where if this is undefined, then you go maybe with a default value or whatever. Okay, so uh, in other languages, if you try to access uh, a non-existing property, you get an exception. So to do this, you will have to test it or to do some try-catch uh, code you know, to handle that case. And it's good if the, if the case of uh, not knowing which properties you have is, an, is a strange case, is a corner case, so in that case it's good to handle that in a special way, as an error. But here it would be much more frequent uh, that we have an object and may, it may have some property or not, and so we are much more flexible in that. It doesn't throw any errors, but we must remember that we uh, must uh, uh, handle or check for undefined values. By the way, um, this is equivalent to that code, but let's make an example. Uh, where is my, okay. Okay, let's try to, in, in, in uh, okay. Um, so let's let take the example of the book, okay? So uh, the book has a, has an author and the author may have a surname and so on. So I have uh, the, an object that may be the author. Let my author 
equal to name Dante surname Alighieri ok and then I can create a book with the title of Divina Commedia and the author taking from that other object my author ok so if you print book it will structure in this way book.title is a string book dot uh, year of publication is undefined okay book uh, dot uh, author is a reference to this object that it can then query by accessing the uh, the name of the author or the middle name is undefined. It doesn't have a middle name, this person. So either I get a value or I get undefined. Just beware that when I get undefined, I cannot go forward. I mean, if, if from Booker I was looking from a publication city, publication is undefined. If I try to do publication city, I get an error, an exception. Not because uh, publication is undefined. That's perfectly normal. But uh, I'm trying to access the property city from undefined. What I'm writing here is undefined dot city. But undefined is not an object. It's a value of a different type. Hmm? So what you get is an error on the next access. Not when you access a wrong property, but when you try to use that undefined value from the property. So at the beginning, you say, what? what's the problem? Hmm? Uh, the problem is not city. The problem is publication, which is undefined. Hmm? Cannot read property of, of undefined. And you see that, well, no, I, I, I'm reading property of publication, not of undefined. Okay? So we must be aware of this kind of, of, of error. So that's why we, we can read one level of uh, undefined uh, properties, uh, but not the second level. Hmm? Unless we are using the guard with the end operator or with the, there was a operator, the operator called null coalition that uh, helps you stop your computation if the value is null. But Okay, speaking about objects uh, and dynamic properties, there is a way of listing all the property of an object uh, which is the for in statement, not for of, that is normal for arrays, for in loops over the property names. Okay, so if you have an object like this that contains two coordinates x and y, you loop in the object properties, the variable here will be a string representing the name of the first property and the name of the second property. And so in this case, it prints the strings here. And if you want to use these strings to access the values of the property, you can do that with a square bracket syntax, of course. There are some rare cases when you want to loop all uh, um, on all the properties and, and read them. Uh, that's, uh, that's a pity because it's a very, you know, uh, it's, it's an operation that we need quite seldom, so nearly never, but uh, the in, it's too easy to type or to, to mistype. Huh? So let's try not learn, don't learn for in, try to only to stick in your mind for of. Huh? Um, by the way, objects can be queried, so we can ask an object, what are your keys? or property names, uh, keys and another definition of property names, uh, uh, or what are what is the full list of your contents, and it will return me an array of arrays of pairs, uh, name, value, 
property name, property value. So it's a way of dumping down an object into an array if we want to manipulate its elements and so on. Okay? So instead of maybe looping over the uh, properties and extracting them one by one, you just convert them to an array. So it will no longer be your object, it will be an array that uh, you can use to, to analyze the content if you want. So there are these methods, uh, get me the keys or get me a list of entries if we need it. And then you can loop over this with a normal for of, because these are arrays. I would probably, one can say that a for in over an object is the same as a for of over the keys of the object. They, the, they do the same. They just iterate over the string names of, a, of every property. Objects uh, are can be copied by reference or by creating physical uh, actual copies. By default, when you write uh, an assignment, uh, it only copies the reference. General rule, there's not an exception. Like we did with, with arrays, like we did with strings and so on, okay? So if I write book two is equal to book, I make a, a new reference, an alias to the same object. If I really want to make a copy, there are several syntaxes for doing that. This one is not very intuitive, but it works. Uh, the assign method of the object class uh, adds some property, merges the property of two objects, basically. Takes one object and merges into this object properties from another one. And in this case, the destination one was an empty object in which we were merging the properties of uh, um, the new one. But, uh, where is the scene? Do I have it? No, maybe not in this slide, but we already know, probably by copying from what happened to the arrays, so we have the book, uh, okay. If I want to make a copy of the book, uh, if I write let uh, book two, is a copy of the book, this would be an alias. Of course, the value is identical, but the object itself is also identical. And we see it if we change book, uh, okay, let's see it later. If I want to make a copy, book C is a copy, one possibility could be just uh, to use the same syntax uh, that we had for arrays. The spread operator also works for object properties. And so we are creating an object that contains the list of properties that were, there were in that book copy is the same as before. Okay, so uh, the slide tells you that the correct way is use uh, object at a sign but a very useful shortcut to make for making a copy of an object is to just recreate another object with the same list of properties. And we write it more in this way. Uh, beware, it's a shallow copy. So if I modify the title of the original book, book.title, I send it to, what did S Dante write? I don't know. Uh, I don't know, IDK. And so book, of course, has been modified. The title is now, I don't know, and the author is the same. The book two that we created is the same, of course, while the book copy still retains the other value because it's a separate copy. But the author object contained inside the book is still shared. Okay, because we made a copy of a string, I don't, when creating the new object here, we took, we created a new project property called the title, and we had a reference to uh, a copy of the string. And uh, for author, we created a new property called author, so we created a new object with new properties, but uh, some properties point to an object. And in this case, we are creating a new property sharing the same reference to the object. If you want, we can visualize it on 
the JavaScript tutor to see what we did, okay? So we define a book, what is that, like this. First the author, then the book, then we make a copy of the book, sorry, a, a reference, an alias to that book, and a, a real copy. Uh, it doesn't support the syntax, sorry. Uh, uh, we use the other object of assign, which is the same. Hmm? Okay, so this is what we got here. So we have the original book, or can we go line by line? We define my author as an object. Then we define the book as a new object with a title and an author, and this author is a reference to the object that we had before. This is one is book two is equal to book. And so we create a new variable that points to the same object. Like that. Finally, we are creating a copy of the book. So we are creating a new object. So we are not referring to this object. There will be a new object there with the same properties. And the value of these properties will be copied from the values of that one. So a new object with the same property, title becomes title, author becomes author, but it's a different object. The first string is copied here, and this value, which is a reference, is copied there as a reference. The value is a reference, I, I'm just copying that. Let's imagine that you're writing book C dot title equal to book two dot title. And then book C dot author equal to book dot author. It's an equal, you are copying the value. And if the value is a reference, we are, you are, we are going to share the object to which it refers. So we made one new instance of this book object. We didn't make an extra instance of the author object. Right. That's why we call it a shallow copy. We are making a copy. We are separating only the first layer of properties. If we wanted to also replicate uh, or separate the author and all the linked objects, uh, we would need uh, an algorithm to do a, a deep copy. Right? Make a copy of the object and a copy of all the objects being referred to instead of just referring to them. Hmm? It's not a problem, we just need to be aware of that because if we are changing now the author name from Dante to D, because, okay, of course the book has the new name D, also book two, but it's the same variable, but also uh, book C has the original title because modifying the title on the copy doesn't affect, uh, uh, modifying the, the title on the original doesn't affect the copy, but uh, the author is still a shared object, so modifying that will uh, survive the modification uh, from all the independently on the path from which you are getting to that object. Okay, so this is true for a nested object, it's also true for a nested array. If you have an object that contains an array and you made a copy of the object, remember that the array is still the same, unless you copy it also explicitly. Okay, um, well, that's what the example here. Uh, okay, this uh, uh, object of assign uh, is used, uh, of course, to merge, as I said, to merge uh, properties from different objects. So you want to create a new object that merges the property of more than one. 
you can use the assign or you can use the spread uh, syntax. Okay, imagine I want to do a very stupid thing like uh, uh, create a new variable with uh, all the properties. I could say, okay, uh, let's put together all the properties from book and all the properties from author. Doesn't make much sense, but uh, no, no, it will my author. Can I hate you? Okay. And so I created an object uh, putting together a uh, title and author that were references uh, taken from book, from property of book, and then name and surname that were taken from author. And of course, this author also is pointing to some strings there, but that's a stupid thing to do. It doesn't make any sense here, but just to show you the syntax, okay? What uh, uh, the slides and the books uh, describe the object to the sign, which is the syntax that is valid since uh, 2015, in the latest iteration of JavaScript, uh, you know, a couple of years later, they uh, you know, define this spread syntax, which today is much more convenient to work with. So we are, and also, from my point of view, also, also more explicit. You have all the property from this and all the property from that, we put to, uh, them together in a single object. Um, and plus, uh, we could also add some extra properties. So we want to say that this book has all the pro this object, all the property for book, all the property for author, and then uh, we give it a score of five. And uh, it creates an, an, an object that has uh, some property, a property borrowed from an object, some property borrowed from another, plus some property defining line. I can mix them as I like. So it's very flexible, and I think it's also very readable to write in this way. Um, so, in fact, the spread operator for doing this operation is only supported from ECMAScript 9, JavaScript 9, from 2018, so we are <laughs> very well, uh, very well supported today, you know, over the six years that have been defined, uh, except from some, some tools like the Python Tutor that was supported on only ES6 and not ES9. That's why it gave me an error before. But normally we can use it uh, very, uh, very directly. Um, the operator in also tells me whether a, a property uh, an object contains a property, okay? Uh, for example, if I check if author is in book, uh, is the same as checking, uh, trying to access book.author and checking whether the result is undefined or not. Uh, but if, if you want to check it before, you can use this syntax. Normally, we try to access and check for undefined, but it's uh, um, Okay. Okay, we have uh, okay, different methods here for creating an object. Uh, the, the main one is using the braces that are more direct. Uh, or we can also use this constructor new object, but it's just a heavy syntax, exa exactly equivalent to this one. Hmm. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. And then we will learn to use uh, uh, so-called constructor functions. Because when I build an object like this, I'm deciding the list of properties right on the spot. This object with this property. And if I'm creating another object uh, similar to this later on, uh, well, that, that proper, those properties could be different. There is no constraint. But in many cases, when programming, I want to have a group of objects all of the same type. Type is a strong word in JavaScript. All with the same set of properties. And so, uh, one way is to delegate the creation of objects to special functions that will, uh, of course, create objects of the same type. Hmm? It's not a class that forces or constrains an object to have exactly those properties. It's a function that helps me construct a new object. Hmm? Uh, we will learn them in a second when we talk about functions. Hmm? 
So objects are very simple and flexible objects. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry for the mismatch of words. Uh, uh, items in, in JavaScript. And uh, that, that flexibility allows for uh, easy creating and uh, adding and manipulating properties uh, uh, much more than in other languages. So we, we don't have any friction like we have in other language uh, for, oh, I need to define a class and then create an object. Right? It takes time, so sometimes we, use, we just use an array uh, by mixing values or we use some other way of transferring data. Here it's so, so easy to create an object, uh, to extract this property, to mix, uh, to reuse these properties that we are using objects with the same you know, uh, simplicity as we were using arrays, just as containers values. Hmm? And we'll see that uh, in, the, in the type of code that we write. Okay, and the other big, uh, big uh, topic in JavaScript are functions. Hmm? We can only begin today talking about that. If uh, in JavaScript everything is an object, uh, then the most important everything are functions. The most important types of uh, uh, objects are functions. That they are those that give the flavor of the language. The language works in this way as a consequence of how languages are defined. All the strange things about arrays, or objects, or dynamicity, and so on, you find also them in Python, for example. Hmm? But functions are mm, designed a different way in, uh, here in Java. Hmm? Um, functions are objects. You can use a function wherever you want, you would have a value of any other kind. So you can create an array of functions, an array of references of objects whose type is function. You can create objects whose properties are functions. Okay, we call them methods if you want. We can call a function with a parameter which is a function or create a function that returns a function. It's a value a special kind of value which supports a special kind of indexing. An array supports the indexing with square brackets and you pick the index. An object supports the indexing with a dot notation and you pick the property. A function supports the indexing with the round parentheses and you execute the code. Nothing more than that. Hmm? Well, there's a lot more than that. But if you remember that uh, when I define a function, I'm just creating an object with a special behavior. Also an array is a type of object that has a special behavior, indexing, length, and so on, all the methods for that type of, of object. A function is also an object that is created with a slightly different syntax, but okay. But then as an object, we can do everything that we do with the other types of objects. And this ease of creating functions and passing them around as normal values influences a lot of the, of the style in which we program in JavaScript. Okay, let's start from the beginning. How do I define a function? The old way. Function, name, parentheses, parameters inside, curly braces for the body, for the body. It's like you define a function in, uh, let's say, Python. Python uses def as a keyword. Here, you define function as a keyword. It's a dynamic language, so there are not data types. Hmm? There's no int or void or whatever uh, for declaring the type of the value, the return value, nor the type of the parameters. You just list the name of the function and the names of the argument. That's it. Because the name of the function, of course, will create an object do of type function. And the name of the arguments will just be a reference to whatever object the caller is passing, passing to that function call. And the type is not embedded into the parameter, the type is embedded into the value being passed. So when I, probably I'm expecting some type of object, but I'm not constraining that in the function definition. 
And then we have the value of the function. Okay, we, okay nothing strange. Normal syntax. Uh, and so we define a function square that takes an argument x and uh, creates inside the function, we can create local variables. So y, which is inside the bracket, so it's local. And we can return a value. And we can call a function with a parenthesis. So that's the normal way of, of function. Every language behaves in this way. Nothing strange. Everything works, uh, everything is an object, uh, so everything works by reference. So this for is an object uh, defined in the main code, uh, and the reference to this object is passed uh, and used to in initialize x. Okay, so now for is, a, is immutable because it's a number, so that may, doesn't make any difference. But if instead of four we had an array or an object, X would become a reference to that array or that object, not a copy. And there is no by value passing, there is no hidden copies, as I, as I said before, always reference passing. And the same goes for Y. The function returns a reference to the variable Y. So Y is a local variable that I create here refers to an object, in this case it's a number, okay. The variable disappears when we finish the function. But the object created by the variable, by the, by the function, that y was pointing to this object, when the function disappeared, this reference is returned to the main column. Hmm? So actually this 16 here, again, these are simplified notation, because the number is immutable, so we can afford it. But this 16 here and this is in there, and this one are actually the same object somewhere. Okay? Y is the variable we create here. Sorry, we create here. And we assign it with 16. Then the return statement creates a new ob a new reference to what? To the object representing Y. So actually this six is a reference, this value here is a reference to that. And the final assignment copies that reference to this value, copies it to left, the left-hand side of the assignment, which is variable n. So again, if inside a function we are creating just a number, we don't care. If we are creating an array or uh, an object inside the function, that object or that array survives and can be used uh, in the external uh, environment okay so the survival of objects uh, is independent from the survival of the variables that are currently pointed to this object an object survives as long as there is at least one variable pointing at it hmm? otherwise it will be garbage collected uh, parameters to functions are passed normally by may be passed by value or of are passed you know, these are very strange. It's, uh, it's, it's saying, it's, they are passed by reference, okay? We are passing the value of the reference. It's quite uh, uh, not intuitive to say. Uh, we can pass parameters by order or by name. So it's possible to um, define a default value of a parameter that can be passed or not with an equal. And when we call the function, we can specify the name of the parameter that we call, but these are the, just details of the function call. The, when I call a function, I'm not forced, I'm not obliged to pass all the parameters. If a function has four parameters, I can also call it with two. Uh, and there, the other ones uh, will just get the value undefined. So inside the body of the function, I just try, I can check, okay, is uh, this parameter undefined means that it was not given to begin with. So maybe we are setting some default value in some way, no? Uh, this is a statement for saying, okay, the P is reassigned with a value of P if P is truth. Or if this is false, then we can use this, the second hand, uh, the default value, okay? So this works for everything except the empty string, as we already mentioned last day. Um, 
Okay, we are also in, para in function parameters. We can use the rest syntax. Uh, we are not going to use very frequently, but just to say that the same operator also works in arrays, works in objects, works in functions. It means that I, in this case, when I call this function with one parameter, it will get to one, par one. If I call it with two parameters, there will be parameter one and two. And if I call it more, with more than two parameters, uh, they will, all the ones uh, after the first second two, they will be put into an array. They will be called R here, the, uh, the array of the array of the other parameter, of the rest of the parameters. Uh, so it's very easy compared to other languages to say, okay, give me whatever parameter you want, then I will check. Hmm? Uh, okay, that was the easy way. No, not the easy, the, the traditional way. There are other two slash three, depending on how we count them, different uh, variations of the syntax. What we do here is to create an object of type function and assign it to a variable called do. Do is a variable. It's not something special. It's a variable. Like if I write it, let do equal to something. It's a variable that points to an object of type function. And this is more explicit because we can also write it in this way. We define a variable, fn, whose value is initialized with a value of type function. Function is the value, it's not something special. It's a value, one type of object value. Okay? And so we can also use function as, a, as an operator creating an object of type function. Like a square brace creates an object of type object, or a square bracket creates an object of type array. The keyword function creates an object of type function. And once we have created this object, we can assign it to whatever variable we want. Okay, so from here to there, to the end, it's a, a sort of a creating, a, an it's just an expression, which is called function expression, because it's just an expression computing a value. Like x plus one, it's an expression. The type of this expression is function. And the function object contains a list of parameters and a body and an executable and a set of instructions containing its body. It's just a special container, a function is just a special container of these two items, a list of parameters with default values, so let's, not, uh, let's not mind the details, and a list of statements. We create this object of type function and we assign it to a variable. Then if we want, we could also give a name, an internal name to this object. In this case, it would be something that's stored inside the object for debugging purposes, mainly. Okay. Then the debugger will, will write, you are in function that is called do, but... And whether I call here do three, or I call it there function three, the behavior is the same. I have a variable defined in different ways, I don't care, that is of type function. So any variable that points to a value of type function can be called. If you have a variable that points to an array, you can address it. If you have a variable that points to an object, you can, it's a dot, uh, you can uh, extract a property. If you have a variable that points to a function, you can call it. Okay? So in this sec the, uh, these two syntaxes are equivalent. They do the same thing. Okay? Um, and okay, here is an example that uh, shows uh, the two syntaxes side by side and the result is totally uh, equivalent. Plus, Plus, uh, there is a, um, okay, this, this uh, way of creating a, a function object with a function expression will enable us to say, okay, but so when I'm creating an object 
and define a property of an object, the value of this object, this property, sorry, the value of this property could be a function. Like it could be a string, it could also be a function. So that's how we create methods. Methods are not a special kind of anything. Methods are just object properties, like strings and numbers and arrays, or another nested object, are just another property of an object that happens to have a value of a type function. We don't need any extra syntax. So we can say that an object is uh, A uh, is 10, and then B is a function that receives X and returns uh, uh, X plus 1. And if you have an object, uh, Y, creating this way, I can call this function with y dot b parameter string. It looks like a method call, right? I'm just taking the property b, and since this property has a value of type function, I can call it. Okay? Today we are looking at the syntax. Then the Semantic consequence will come later and they are very significant. And there is a last uh, uh, va uh, variant, which is a simplified variant, uh, version of the function expression. So this is an expression, again, from here to there, where we are dropping the word function. And using a, the arrow symbol instead. So instead of writing function parameters, we write parameters arrow. That's it. It's the same. So mm, we're not totally clear. There's a couple of exceptions, but okay, not for today. They are the same thing as this. It's lighter as a syntax. We don't have to write function which has seven letters, okay? Only two. Um, so it makes easy to create fu a function on the fly. When you just need a function, remember the sort uh, that we did before. Sort requires uh, a, um, an ordering function, a lambda function. And so it, we don't need to define a function in another file, just write it right there. So it, it uses a lot for inline function. The method, the object that we, say that we had before, we had the property B, we could have just write it as easily like uh, x uh, arrow return x plus 1. Hmm? It's, it's the same. We are using the arrow instead of a keyword function. It will require some training in our eyes to recognize which are functions, okay? Because it looks like a lesser than or equal sign or greater than or equal. No, it's a this symbol creates a function. This keyword creates a function. By the way, the arrow functions are also, can also be simplified because this, uh, in this case, we have only one parameter, so we can drop the parentheses. And we have only one instruction, which is a return, and so we can drop the bracket. So in this case, we would write uh, x arrow x plus 1. It will take us some time you know, to, to, to recognize and to write the things, but uh, this is where it comes very, uh, very useful because it's a powerful way of creating functions here and there. And instead of you know, defining strange set of parameters or options, we just give a function that does the work. Okay, so I, for today we'll see them just as a shortcut. Define it like this, define it like that with a function expression or with an arrow expression, they are all functions, they, are all, they all behave in the same way. Just the syntax is becoming lighter and lighter when we need to use them in a, con in a more con complex uh, context, for example. Okay, uh, I will stop here today and next time we'll try to, to see the consequences of what we have saw right now. Thank you and see you on Tuesday.